Welcome to Beginning the Day with God on Tuesday the 6th of September. The music we've just been listening to was I Offer Myself to Thee by Catherine Crossweller. Shine on us, Lord, like the sun that lights up the day. Chase away the dark and all shadow of sin. May we wake eager to hear your word. As day follows night, may we be bathed in your glory. Our reading this morning. Meanwhile, Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them, to, bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now, as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. And our reflection this morning. The story of the conversion of Saul is justly famous. His encounter with the profound and gracious power of God is so well known that the phrase Road to Damascus experience has entered common parlance to represent a sudden change of world view. Yet for all its familiarity, this story should shake, still shake us to our bones. The context for Saul's conversion is violence, hatred and persecution. He is a figure who inspires fear, even terror, in Jesus' early followers. He is a man who, seemingly, is so sure of the righteousness of his cause that he is prepared, like a secret police officer, to drag Christians out of their homes to face their end. Into the midst of Saul's righteous violence comes the humbling grace of God. Jesus' encounter with Saul is shattering in its simplicity and honesty. He represents Saul, he presents Saul with a, dis a discomforting truth. That each time he persecutes a follower of Jesus, he, persecu he persecutes Jesus and therefore God himself. I too am brought up short by this truth. I am reminded that when I treat others with disrespect or aggression, or meanness. My action echoes beyond itself. I do a violence to Jesus and to God himself. If this passage shows that God calls even the most violent to be obedient to God, all of us should be aware that our words and actions sting God as much as our neighbours. When we treat others badly, the body of Christ itself is hurt. We join now in the words that our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, 
and that we show forth our praise not only with our lips but in our lives. By giving up ourselves to thy service and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us this new day and evermore. Amen.